let's uh, start. It's very nice to see still most of you in the room, although I see more and more empty chairs, but you're still, you're still holding there, holding out. Um, who of you, question before, who of you have attended the workshop last year? About half? Okay, because you, you've seen this interface then. Um, we had it, it was an earlier version, because I'm going to demonstrate the, the, the new CDI servers. Um, the ones that have attended last year have already seen it, and they've tested it, and what we've done was already used your comments to upgrade to the version that is there now. And we've loaded it also with a little bit more data. It's still not uh, the 2.3 million, it's 500,000 files, but it's, uh, it's getting there. So, um, I must say that what we did last year really was really helpful for us, because where can you get a parallel user test? Well, it's not so easy to organize. And if we do it here, last time I think we had two hours, now we do just do it for one hour. Uh, so after my introduction, I'll let you play a little bit. Streaming again? Yeah. yeah. No? Oh. No, it fell out again. Did you go? Well at the back, there are empty seats here at the front, at least for seven, eight persons. Yeah, I will let them know. If you have trouble viewing the screen or the content of the screen during the presentations, there are now really seven, eight seats here in the front. So if you have trouble, you can always come forward. If you're shy, you can stay there. <laughs> um, so the new CDI interface, what we, you, well, I hope, assume that most of you have visited the current CDI interface and that has been the same for about 10 years. Well, it's been upgraded technically, but the interface is really uh, a bit outdated. So with the new ingestion system, data from the cloud, we had so many new specs, we had so many requests for additions. Um, we decided uh, already in the, when we started CData, uh, CData Cloud to also re make a real new uh, interface. Um, and it had to be faster, so we, uh, we implemented Elasticsearch um, and it had to be also faster in the sense of faster delivery. As, um, as Dick said, we had a list of shortcomings and this was one. It's, in the current interface, it's quite hard if you have data from 18 different data, sets, data centers, which can easily happen if you make a, an order of 20,000 files. You had to go to 18 different links to, to pick it up. Um, so now we will deliver it via one zip file. And that we can do that because it comes from the cloud. But even if it's restricted data, it will, it will still build up one zip file with restricted data for you. And restricted data will take some time to process because it has to be released by each data center. But what you will see is that it builds up. Um, and it had to be easier, so faster to the data, uh, but also um, easier in the sense of we have all these nice vocabulary lists in the metadata. Um, like geographical areas, right? the, the, the list of, uh, of uh, regional seas, but also the parameter P02 list with uh, all the parameter groups. But now it was long list and you had to scroll through to find them, while you can now easily implement a search on top of it and just start typing and then it will look up the ones that, that actually match the part that you, that you are typing. So the whole, um, well, whole development was aimed in, at improving that. Uh, also make it a little bit more appealing, uh, uh, making a use of the latest uh, technology with maps and adding additional maps and showing everything on the map if you want. Uh, because we realized that if you're searching C CDI data, it can be that in f at first stage, you're not so much interested maybe yet in displaying it on the map. You first want to have it in lists and you want to have an overview uh, of what is actually there. You want to start searching and maybe first you get 100,000 files, you think, okay, but I need to drill down. 
So we also made the, the step from, and you will see that now when I demonstrate, from a first search on a word, and then you can still, then you can again drill down and, well, make your selection smaller and smaller until you think, okay, now this is what I need, and then order it. And also more, more, a little bit more added value for the users. So um, um, we call it MyC Data Cloud, so that you have uh, an environment where you can store your queries, where you can um, um, easy, easily uh, access your, 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 your search, um, sorry, your stored searches, but also access your orders and your history of orders. Uh, and even, and that is not implemented yet in the, at this point, but as I said yesterday, the connection in the end to the VRE. So that you can say, okay, this is nice. I got here now 20,000 files. Now move it into my, uh, into my workspace in the VRE. And that's the ideal end solution that we want to achieve uh, because then you can really search for CDataNet data and work with it online with the CDataNet tools. So what I'm going to do now is to, uh, I'm going to play a little bit to show you how it works if you haven't seen it before. before. Um, and then I'll ask you to just play with it for, I don't know how many time we have, I think a total an hour, but uh, the last five minutes I will do a wrap up. Um, and we have, um, we have a URL for that. It's sdc.maris.nl. Watch out, not HTTPS, it's not secured. So if your browser goes automatically to uh, um, HTTPS, you might get an error. Sorry for that. But um, if you go to sdc.maris.nl, then you will get two buttons. And one is to the search interface, so you don't have to remember the ugly URLs that's still there. And the other one is to a um, feedback form. So after this test, I will ask you to fill out, in the last 10 minutes, to fill out the, the feedback form. And with that, you can report any kind of bugs to us that you, that you found. Um, Compliment us on the things that you like, but also be don't uh, don't be shy. Just say also what you don't like because we what we did last time uh, last year we collected everything, all the feedback, and we looked of course to patterns. We, we we didn't react to just one unless it was a bug, of course. Then we reacted to it. But you cannot please all the users. But if ten users said ah, that's button I can't find it, of course we try to locate it in a more uh, usable way. So we we try to improve the usability. So let's see what comes out of this test today. That's uh, um, quite interesting. So let me um, let me go to sdc.maris.nl. So you should see something like this. Here's the online Google form for your responses later. But uh, if you want, you can already play along with me while, while I'm uh, demoing a bit. Uh, but later you get the time to uh, to do more. I think, yeah, if you are logging in, this one has remembered my Marine ID, so I'm immediately logged in. Um, if and you can see that here, hello, Peter. Um, but if you are there, you have to log in with your Marine ID first, if you want. If you don't, you stay anonymous. But later then when you start ordering, you will be requested again to log in. So I would we more or less request to log in first to have a smoother experience because then you also have the option to store your queries and to easily go. It will just make the whole work much simpler. Uh, let's see. <coughs> yeah, now I see the same as you. So the first thing we did last time, people requested, can I, can I please just play and make the window as wide as I want? Because some people want this when they have list and others want to have a big map. So we make, you can just click that one and drop. That was a, a big feedback last time. So I'll make it somewhere in the middle. Um, what you see here, and you will recognize if you, you will recognize the search fields, um, from the current interface, 
we have a list of the, what we think are the main search fields that most people use, which is actually if we do research on the queries now used in the interface, more than 90% uses only the free search. <laughs> so, th um, but that's maybe also because it's quite hard to make combinations. Yeah? So as I said, um, um, if you have this in the current interface, if you have the long list of P02, it's really hard to find something. Because it's a long list, but if you now start and you want to have a specific parameter you want to search on, for example, something with nitro or something, or um, so, so you can just start typing in the long list and it will just show you the ones that you actually want. Um, and it works like that with many of the search fields. So the long lists are made more easily accessible. Then we have another option at the top. There's a button, advanced search, and it will scroll down immediately. It opens it below. And that's if you want re to make really specific queries and build slowly a query. But the thing is, the more specific, specific you will be, you have to know what's in your query. Um, because the more specific your query, you will build it will be and 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 so at the, as soon as you before you know it you have no results that's the downside so what we what we did to overcome that and I refresh now everything is that since many people do the the at first a free search oh, I need that the other keyboard So let's, um, I'll do nitrate. I think I did it last time as well. It's very fast, as you see. Now we have um, 18,000 results out of 500,000. And instead of just showing you the list, we have on the left, and you will recognize this from booking.com or other search agents, um, a list to further drill down. So you, even if you have done a free search, you can still filter, but you see what's actually in your result list. So that was, this will immediately adjust. And now, of course, the data distributor, we have now loaded it with data from Shom and Ephraimer only, which is already 500,000 uh, CDIs. But of course, this list will normally be much longer uh, if you do a, a free search. But I can, for example, just drill down and say, okay, I want the Mediterranean. And you see immediately the map move. Let's hope that it comes back. Where's the map? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's the WMS, that's a bit slow. Um, so it will build. And it works in tiles. Normally this should be faster, by the way. It uh, must be something in the, in the connection. Or maybe because if we're all doing it, and you're following me. That can uh, that can be it. Um, so in this way, I already have nitrate in the Mediterranean. It's, it's pretty fast. Um, and if I want to make a short order because I want to demonstrate that, I can switch here my list to 100 or 1,000. We do not have implemented yet the button "Give me all" because we're still fighting over how to implement it and how to how many to allow to show it because we do not want to have. 2.3 million files downloaded by a user, but also just uh, allowing them to order by thousand is also not very handy. So we're going to end up somewhere in the middle. But let's say now I make this first order and I can just click this link or any specific um, record if I want. I'll make an order of 1000 files. I go to my data basket. Now you see that the top right, you see constantly where, how much you ordered. You can build it, slowly build it up and keep, keep adding to it. If I then do, uh, please don't go over 10,000, by the way, because then you will have to wait a long time. So I would say don't go over 1,000 in this test. But later, when you're testing yourself, you can, you can go further. Um, so you get, a, you get a confirmation of where your files are, where, where they are, and now you can uh, submit it. So I'll make a quick order now. You can see how, how fast you can do. What is very nice now, you can just give your own order a name, so you can recognize it later. Um, what you actually did, so I can call it um, nitrate med. If there's multiple 
later when we did the conversion, we will have uh, NetCDF, CF point, and ODV, and maybe potentially some files in MetAtlas. You can make a choice. Now they're all ODV, so there's no choice to be made. And you have to give a, uh, a motivation for your order. That's more for later, and especially when there's restricted data in it. I just indicate test. I submit, and it's already done. So you can go, if you want, very, very quickly to, uh, to ordering data. And there's a, you will get an email in your, uh, your mailbox with exactly this information, and that you will be uh, uh, directed to, to keep an eye on it. What we've also implemented now is that if it's restricted data, it can be that it's not immediately available. Yeah, that because it might take some time for people to release it, to review who's the user. Do I actually release it to that user? Oh yes, it's somebody from Informat, it's okay because it's academic. Or is it the commercial partner? No, I don't want to release it. First, I want to know what they use it for. So that can take some time. But what we will do now is when there's a change in your restricted in data with, uh, sorry, in an order with restricted data, we will give you a notification at the end of the day. Something has changed in these orders. So you don't have to check yourself, you'll be reminded. And if I then click here the button, visit your orders, you can see that I made some tests already. Um, an order will move from orange, which is pending, waiting for processing, to green in the end, means it's ready for downloading. And once I've downloaded it once, it will move to blue. It's completed. It will still stay there, I think for 30, 30 days at the moment. And then, so once after you've downloaded it, you can download it again, but after 30 days, we clear it. And then it will actually move to your history. And then it will, someday it will move completely. So we have this order and, oh, it's already there. So it's really fast. I think my, uh, normally it will run every five minutes. And it depends also a bit on looking up with the IDs, the PIDs of the files into the cloud, where the files are, extract it, zip it, and then it's ready for you. So this was pretty fast, I must say. We're getting faster and faster. So that's really nice. So here you can see the, the overview of your files. And with these buttons, I can um, either look what my query was, I can um, uh, delete it, or I can go to download. I can download the, the files, the records itself, and, uh, and even the CDI metadata that's attached to it. So that was, um, that was very fast. With close, you go back to your search to where you were. So it just is an overlay over the interface. That was also last time it was different. So the ones that have seen it before, um, we hope you prefer this better. It's quite, you cannot lose something. It will stay there. And you always have here the button that you can go back to your safe searches and to your standing orders, so to your personal space. Um, okay, some nice uh, gadgets. Let's make a, make a new uh, a new one. Let's look again in... Oh, well, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to zoom out a bit. And what you can do, for example, is make also a geographic search. It will just indicate to you, give you an area. You just have to draw this area to where you're interested. Let's say we're looking for data on the Portuguese-Spanish coast on the Atlantic. Accept. It fills out the coordinates here. Um, well, so you can, you can drill down. Eh? So you can, um, if you are interested in chemical data, you click here and you see that all the boxes below, I see, by the way, something weird now, because I see them double. It's a bit strange. Yeah, that's weird. Everything is double. Okay. <laughs> um, that's a new one. So that's at least a, a bug that wasn't there. But you can see now that once you take the chem chemical data, you see that it drills down P03 to this. So I, uh, to, to a list of chemical discipline parameter groups. And if I then click the carbon again, and normally P02 should be below. It drills down again, and I have only P02 files, sorry, P02 terms 
so parameters that are part of that P03. So and then I can uh, select a couple. No idea if I'm going to get something now, but it, in this way you can make a list. Let's see if we still have some data. Oh, yeah, still have something left. And some nice uh, tracks, I see. So if the tracks actually cross the area that you indicate, then it will, uh, it will show up. So this is the way you can, you can play with it. And Later, I can also say, oh, I want to get rid of that one. I want to get rid of that one. So you can, you can always adjust in the second screen, again, to query you built in the first one or add additional terms. And if you want to go, if you prefer to have that other query builder, you can always go back to refine search and everything that you've indicated and added, add it in the, um, let's say in the facets, it's still there in this screen. So your coordinates are kept and your terms are updated here. Um, okay, let's clear this one. Let's make a new search. What I like also is this. If you go, let's take nitrate again because you know it's a nice collection of data. And then even here, I can still say, okay, I want to have a specific geographic area that I'm interested in. Oh, now it's doing a bit weird. So, accept and close, search. And you see this map always zoom. It's taking some time, but there it comes. And what is nice is that you have the, um, like in every map based interface, you have the, the opportunity to, uh, to add additional layers and you can switch also the background map that we have. There it goes. I think if, since we're all on the Wi-Fi, it's maybe not always that fast. It's quite heavy what we're doing all together. Um, I can switch on another bathymetry to make it pretty. I can, this is even better if I do it like this. Um, but of course, we have to promote the uh, Emonet bathymetry, nice bathymetry, to make it nice and colorful. And you can, if you have multiple layers active, you can just uh, switch the, uh, the way of display. And at the moment, my bathymetry is over my selection. I can just drag and drop. So now I can see my, uh, my data points again. And you can make some. Uh, If you would want to add a snapshot, for example, to, uh, uh, to a report, you can make some nice prints. And that you can actually do here. Export this map to PNG and you get an, uh, you get an export. So this is, um, if you haven't ever visited the Emotet Bathymetry website, Go and do it because it's really nice. This is a, a product getting more and higher and higher resolution, and they can tell you everything about it. Um, but what is really nice is that they now have a 3D viewer, so in the browser, so you can also tilt then this map that you see here now. You can tilt it, and you can uh, um, really get a very nice uh, bathymetric view on certain areas, and especially areas like this are really nice. Also, the Irish coast, for example and the volcanoes in Italy. They're beautiful underwater. So another option that we have is if you're really interested and you want to know what is specifically this data file, since it's such, it's a, such a nice location, something, you have the identify like in every GIS program. You can click it and then you see in this case, oh, come on, go away. You see there's several, on top of each other, several, um, I think, bottle samples in this case. So you can have a, a view, you can see, ah, okay, so that's this file. 
If you want, you can really add this specific file to your basket. So you can really be very specific in the files that you, uh, that you request. Here you see uh, where we are on the map. And of course you see all the um, CDI metadata as provided. I cannot stress enough, be as complete as possible if you're working on the metadata because it will, well, it will help the, the later data users be not, not only stick to the mandatory information. Um, the more the better. What is a very interesting function as well, uh, let's go back to the results. We have now 2700 results. You can also do so certain search searches where you have 100,000 results. And it's sometimes not so easy to see what's in it. And you want maybe to drill down, but you're not sure. What is very fantastic function is the summary function. Um, so you can view from whom these files are, for example from the originator. So it's actually um, more or less the facets that you have on the left, but then uh, underneath each other. You can make some nice graphs. So we have a graph res representation or table view. And for example, you can easily see from which years the data is, how the distribution of the data is in your collection that you're going to order. And if you're specifically interested, for example, in the data from a certain year, you can click the year and it immediately uses that as a facet. So you now have the nitrate data in that area from 1969. So through the summary, you can drill down. If there's time series data, I think this is not, but if there's time series data, you can even have a time series view so you see which, if it's um, a period of three months, you can see in which month, for example, the, the data is. Depends on the type of data, if it's a useful function. Um, so, yes, I think I've had the most important functions. If you've been following me, and I think you have, because the internet got rather slow, so that's very good. Um, my request now is to, if you can, I don't know what time it is, 5 past 2, I have until 2.30, two right? Yeah. So for the next 15 minutes, if you can play a bit, try it out, take in mind a, uh, a query you want to do. Of course, as I said, there's only 500,000 files in it and it's not from all the partners yet. It's mostly Shom and Um But play with it and look at the usability specifically. Do you understand? Is there, are the buttons on the logical place? Is it easy for you to... <laughs> some Last time we had people that had trouble to find the search button, for example. Well, that's, uh, that's quite an important one. So we have it now double on the page, I think. Um, you, you cannot go wrong. Maybe you crash the system, but then uh, we hear it from uh, either my colleagues or from the uh, people at uh, Sinica or uh, JRNet at the back. <laughs> they, want, yeah, they will be monitoring the, the service, so that's also good for a test. Although this is not the production environment yet, so I have to, well, we have to keep it some... Uh, um, but we're wondering how it, how it functions. Then the last 10 minutes, I'll come back to you and I'll ask you to fill out quickly a form to give us some, some comments. Yes, so um, try it out, please. What we, what we could do is if you can open an incognito browser. So if you close the, if you have the problem with logging in, what you could try is to, in Firefox or Chrome, to open an incognito browser, and then so then it doesn't take on board any cookies. That sometimes also it's not. It we will fix the other problem, but it might help. I've had that before. Please try, but it's 
This this login method has been the same for a year already. We never had it. <laughs> ah, Murphy. Because the first two rows have no problem. That's also weird. <laughs> No. Oh, oh, if people have new marine IDs. Yeah, there's, there's several that have new marine IDs, but also people that have older marine IDs that have the same problem. And that's... No? I can try uh, another browser. Let's see if I can get the same thing. Uh, yeah, why not? If the incognito doesn't, if incognito doesn't work, then you can't order something. But please look at then as the, just the usability of the system. But of course, we'll try to fix this login. Not a problem in Chrome with mine. If it's a marine ID dependent, then it will be very strange. Um, since the ID itself, not the we don't need the password, but you might want to, if you fill out the form, please. Could you, if you have trouble logging in, just indicate your marine ID? Because it can be, we had in the past sometimes with new IDs that some have not co were not completely accepted. Although it is a bit weird that sometimes the whole button to, the, to log in doesn't open. Hmm. Trying to see a pattern, but I don't. <laughs> So in the last five minutes, if you have some nice remarks for us, as I saw, heard already some, please fill in the form. Um, there's a couple of screens, I think, if you... Um, and it also helps us if you leave your uh, email address in there, because then if we're not absolutely sure what you mean, we can contact you. If you fill out the form, you get in the end, you get to what did you like, what did you not like, and then... What did you not like? You can fill out all the bugs that you have. Um, if you want to send a specific uh, screenshot, for example, then please send it to cdi-support at maris.nl. So thank you for testing. Um, if you this this URL will stay up, so we'll look into the problem with the marine ID because it's I saw now that it got stuck somehow in the at the moment you log in and then it blocks and as soon as you then hit okay exit, then you're then it's gone <laughs> and then it never recovers. Um, so it seems like there's a there's a block something blocking in the in the marine ID, but we have to uh, we have to look that up. Um, We will keep this up in the next weeks, and we will be moving to production end of July. Um, fingers crossed. But your feedback also then, even after we open, is very much appreciated. So we can always, and of course with bugs, we always have to fix it. It's a new new development, so you can run into something. And that's especially because there's many services involved that have to talk, communicate to each other, and then sometimes it breaks. Um, one of the underlying systems here is the EU dot system. You've heard it a couple of times. Uh, so we have—I uh, mentioned the B2Safe. 
uh, where the, the, the files are stored and where you get the PID from and this B2 handle. And we have um, Nikos and your, your last name, sorry, I, <laughs> I always forget, <laughs> um, who will um, present you uh, in a, I think half an hour, yeah, just yes. about, to a little bit shorter, the, the, the background, the technical background, if you're interested to, to know how it's actually being managed by the U.colleagues and what, what is their 